Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on fields and forces at a distance. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. <clears throat> okay, so in physics, we tend to like it when we can see the direct cause of an action. In other words, we don't like it when things look like they happen by magic or something along those lines. So if we see a refrigerator begin to move, we like to see that there is something in direct contact with it that is causing it to move. Now, that isn't always the case, but in general, like I said, we have things where if they're receiving a force, it's usually because something is in direct contact with it. That kind of just makes sense for most things. There are a couple exceptions to that. One being magnets, and the other maybe being gravity, and there will be another that we'll talk about in a bit. But the exceptions are these things where we have a magnet and we hold it up and all of a sudden we see maybe not a plane coming down and crashing because of the magnet, but we see the magnet pulling on things without actually being in contact with them. And that's a little strange. It's kind of magic-like, and physics doesn't really like that as in general as an explanation. Uh, and so in order to help quantify and understand it, we came up with this idea of a field, and the field was the kind of go-between. In other words, a magnet creates this field, and that field is what is pulling on uh, the plane. Now, um, and that's why it receives a force at a distance. Now, when I say the word field in physics, I don't mean this big open field like this. What I mean is, is uh, kind of this aura or this idea, this concept that we use to explain these interactions and forces that don't require direct contact. So let's go back to the idea of gravity for a second, because it pulls on us without any direct contact. If we think about Earth, Earth pulls on us, pulls us down towards it. And that's without any contact with Earth. So meaning, if we place something right here, um, Earth's gravitational field will pull it down towards Earth, and it'll come crashing towards Earth. Now, there was no direct contact in order for that to happen. So we think of fields as kind of like these lines. Now, we often draw them with lines, but that's not actually what a field is, per se. It's just how we represent it. And we also use arrows to represent the direction of the field. Um, the strength is indicated by how close the lines are together, so when they're really close together, that's stronger, versus as they get farther and farther apart, that means they are weaker. But really, the way it's working here is Earth is a source of gravity, so it creates a field, a gravitational field, that determines the direction and strength of the force on something that's interacting with that. And so if something like a rock is sitting in this gravitational field, that field is what's pulling on it, not necessarily Earth directly, but kind of indirectly through a gravitational field. So we've kind of gotten around this um, magic way of having things happen by having an indirect source of kind of contact or influence in this sense. So some other examples of field, here's an electric field, describes the direction of force on a charge that sits in this area. Another example would be a magnetic field, and this is actually uh, iron filings that are aligning themselves uh, to the magnetic field created by this magnet. And so there aren't any arrows on this one because this isn't an actual drawing, it's just a picture of what would happen. But again, we can see um, they align themselves to the field lines, or approximately the field lines, and uh, if we put in arrows, it would show you kind of the direction of the force at different points. Another example of Earth's gravitational field that we saw from before. So this one would be Earth as viewed from space, but we can also consider Earth's gravitational field as if we were on Earth, which looks something like this. Namely, if I put something right here, it would fall towards Earth. So the lines show you the direction of the force, and the force is pretty constant, so the spacing doesn't change. But again, this idea of a field that Earth isn't pulling on us directly, but Earth creates a field, and the field is what then pulls or pushes on an object and um, determines where it goes, things along those lines. Now, if you move Earth, then the field moves too. So they are all connected in that sense. So again, I've said this before, but how it works, Earth is a source of gravity, so we say it creates a gravitational field. If we put something in Earth's gravitational field, even if it's not on our imaginary field lines that we drew, um, it would receive a force following that field. And so Earth is interacting with this guy through the gravitational field. Um, you can almost think of it, uh, no, that's not a great example, but yes, so it's interacting through the gravitational field. 
So one last thing with this is because there is this field, this force, you can actually store energy. And we've already talked about gravitational potential energy. Uh, in this case, if Earth has gravity, if you pull something further away, there's more room for that field to act on this guy, which means there's more room for it to speed up or increase its kinetic energy. So by increasing distance away from the source, we actually are increasing the amount of energy stored. And that's true for attractive forces or fields where it's an attractive um, pull rather than a repelling or push away. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. So one to two sentence summary and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. And here are the image credits.